just do this as the intro. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Black Bird Books Chats, episode 2. And today I'm joined by the lovely Esina Gondaveni, who is uh, one half of Born to Guaido. Um, the other half is Sikhen Tempu, who's not here. But it's a girl's party. Uh, and I'm not going to be doing much talking today, she's the boss today. So yay! Hello everybody, I'm Esi, or Esinago. Or no monde chomi. Or no monde chomi. You know, anything goes. Dirty Diana, Maria Podesta, I don't mind. Um, and I thought it would be a good thing to come here. And as much as, you know, it's Blackbird Books Chat, it's about her talking to her blackbirds, I thought it would also be a dope way to get to know Sister dope. Tabiso. Dope. dope. Okay. A dope way to get to know Sister Tabiso. I'm old. Because dope. she's not going to sit and interview herself or, like, have chats about herself. So, and being forced into this. Yeah. Holding you hostage. Yeah. Let's go. Go. So it's what, four years of Blackbird now, this year? Three and a half now. Three so yeah, so half, yeah. so four in August. And how's it feeling since those early releases and where we are now? I'm probably more anxious um, than when it started. I mean, when you start something, the the success of it is is judged solely on the fact that you started yeah okay and when you have started um then the success t for me at least um is how you know have you grown mm. um has your work grown yeah. um and has your vision grown and the more your vision grows the more anxiety inducing the thing becomes because like now there's things that need to happen and things that need to be set in place that scare the living shit out of me like every day, I barely sleep, but it's it's not for him. <laughs> Go on. Have you grown? Has the vision grown? Has the work grown? I want to think that the work has grown. Um, and I mean, even with some of the authors that first published with me in 2015 and 2016, even when they, they submit their second books now, I turn them back because I say this is not where Blackbird is right now. Yeah. This is and this is not what you're going to do as a, as a second time writer. Yeah. My thinking is that if we include as many new people as possible into the reading culture, that they also need to grow. Mm -hmm. And I, I I base this solely on my own reading journey. So from you, yeah. Mills and Boone, and you know the stuff I always talk about. Yeah. From that into what I read now, and I know that everyone needs needs to grow in their reading just as much as the writers need to grow um, and as much as the publisher needs to grow. So I do think there is some growth, yeah. I hope so. I think, um, I remember you and I were like butting heads a little bit over my writing style because it was a little too academic. It was. And, and you were like, no, Essie, you need to write like you're speaking to people who are not in the academy. If you're writing about Guaito, write in a way that reflects that you're writing about Guaito. And um, I want to share this for the camera because you always say that you want to publish books for the person who does not read or the yeah. person who's not a big reader. So it's a very deliberate attempt for you to go, okay, don't make this very academic. What, um, what is it that inspires you about South African illiteracy or even just the fact of not reading? So my mother did her metric when I was like a, a whole person already. Mm. Um, and I, re I remember seeing her mm. go do metric. And that is her doing metric at that age and at that level in her life is the furthest anyone in her family has ever gone. And so the work that I do is really inspired by the need to honor her and her people mm. and where she comes from. And I know that, I know what reading does for people. Um, I know what it does for the intellect, for culture. And I want it to, to be inclusive to as many po people as possible. Um, I think it's so interesting, the many directions you go in. I mean, we're talking about the mining industry now. We're talking about Guaido now. We're talking about how my mom passed away now, holding her <laughs> breath and all these things. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it then create space for all kinds of people who are interested um, from different 
backgrounds and stuff like that to get to that and say, okay, if I want to learn about the mining industry, there's something there yeah. for me. If I want to learn about, um, <coughs> sorry, what it means to be um, a person who has roots in another country from South Africa, I'm going to go read yeah. um, Jamulet and stuff like that. So how, how does a Blackbird book get picked? It's a very... It's something that makes me very uncomfortable now, actually, because uh, this is part of now the bigger vision for Blackbird, where I feel like I urgently need to grow this thing to accommodate new publishers. Yeah. Because, like I say, my, the work is very personal to me. So I choose books that I resonate with, and that is very important. Mm. And, you know, when I... People talk about how... Um, before, like, say, five years ago, the you know the publishing industry was very white, even in its output. Yeah. And and I always say, you know, outside of racism, even or yeah. like white structures or whatever, it's because publishers will publish what resonates what with like. them. We publish what we like. We publish what we like, as Jacqueline would say. But for, so for me, I publish stories that resonate with me. Okay. So I publish the. Um, broken, broken, the mining book because I remember again from my mom's village how I grew up and I'd go visit my grandmother every school holidays and you can see in the in the, in the neighbours that there are no men. Mm. There are no men and then as I grew, suddenly these men start popping up but they all die. So when I first read that submission, when I read that book, that's what it for me, it plugged into. So I, I, I published things I try to publish things that I know intimately yeah, yeah. or stuff that I am interested in yeah. uh, or things that I would love to see in the world. It so it's be, very I, 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 me, me, yeah. me. It must be such a burden though, having people coming, well, you're the black publisher, um, help me out, I'm a black writer, and you're going, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do your work justice because I'm not interested in it. Yeah, and also, I mean, I may be black, but I, I can't represent all black yeah. lived experiences, yeah. and I don't yeah. know all of them, and I haven't lived through all of them. So, for example, if someone were to come to me with a Fees Must Fall book yeah. right now, there would have to be something else in the book that resonates with me. Yeah. So, for example, the Fees Must Fall movement, which is very important, is something that I've been very quiet about because it's not a struggle I know. Yeah. And I think it's unfair to it's place fair myself to in on. it. That's a wonderful thing. I, so. I don't like to speak... On and for things that I don't know. I respect that. You know, so I stepped back. So if someone were to come to me now with Fees Must Fall, I'd actually, I may recommend another publisher for it. I'd, I'd be say maybe go there because that person is in, even if they didn't live through it, but maybe has a keen interest in some other way mm -hmm. to do it. So it's for me, do the stuff you love. Do this, the things you know intimately. So your latest release is Vagabond. Right. Yes. It's written by Lerata Mokwatle and it's about um, how she quit her job and then she just decided to basically go back backpacking through um, Africa. What is it about that book that was something that you felt should be shared? I, admi I admired her, her, like, her courage. Mm. It's the one thing I don't have. I'm not, it's the one thing I wish I could have. I don't have that kind of courage. So that courage, the, the, the courageous part of her story was the thing that made me want to do it. Because mm. of this, this thing I'm very interested in, I'd like to see that in myself. Yeah. Even if it's not to go to Africa, but the courage to do other things in my life that yeah. I'm not doing because fear. Yes, yes, yeah. you just drop things, yeah. I'm very excited for that book. Um, what do you think, or what have been some of your highlights in this last three and a half years? Woo! Highlights. Money is definitely not one of the highlights. There is no money. So I books, guys. So nothing money. Um, so why do you the say if there's no money? Let's start there. I ain't got money on my mind. Money. I just been to Sam Smith, so that's a Sam Smith song. Ah. Um, but I do it for the love. I do it for the love, 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 love. But you. I don't know. I can't answer that without being fucking cliched about it. But you still stay. Um, and I'm going to stay. I mean, I do, like every year, I'm like, I'm giving this one more year of my life and then I'm quitting, but that's you like, can't. not. I'm, I'm going to do it. It's like, a burden. Yeah, but it means I have to work three jobs just to 
like so you know because I've got a child who yeah. wants to go to school and stuff um, <laughs> I'll stay it's very hard it's very hard I pay heavily with my mental health but I I, I will stay but the highlight I'm just going to highlight so we're yeah, keeping, it light, keeping it lighter um, the highlight has been the look on my author's faces when they see their books it doesn't have to be light we can go there no no that's been the highlight the highlight okay. is is watching people realize their dreams i think for me to be able to be part of that and to aid it in and some to, way yeah, or other facilitate it. to facilitate it is 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 I, I don't take it lightly it's a huge huge thing for me i love it so i'm, I'm interested in how you deal with mistakes that occur and especially when they happen you know because it's not a private thing it will be seen by other people so how do you take that process internally and what happens externally i think that the biggest thing about it it's not private yeah my mistakes are not private yeah. it is <sighs> and let me so for me i mean with things like typos right yeah they are my mistakes eventually because it's my business yeah um, and it's the people that have been hired to do the job of making sure that there are no mistakes like that. Yeah. It's their mistakes, but ultimately it falls That's on me yeah. because it's my business, right? Yeah. Um, but just to talk about the biggest mistake, obviously the, or not the biggest, but the largely most public, most public, um, which was from A to B. I took that very badly. I took that very badly. And you know the thing is my, my career has been somewhat of a dream um the publishing thing once i got into it was very hard to get into yeah. but once i got into everything happened almost by magic and that was a very necessary moment yeah. for me because i needed to come back down to earth i needed to center mm. myself and ground my damn self but that was a very hard thing for me to go yeah. through um i mean you know eventually i realized that i had actually been burnt out and yeah. so when that happened I had a huge ass crash um, nervous breakdown had to move from Houting to go back to my dad's house because I, I wasn't okay yeah. um, I, I wasn't working right I wasn't and eventually I mean I had to come to um, the realization and it was an issue in a tweet that Malibu shared um, my, and Malibu shares it a lot and I just can never remember who to, who wrote it? But the nothing but death should ever like sometimes yeah. de only death should feel like death, mm. and that's that's literally how I try to manage it now. Like, um, it's going to happen, and it makes me very anxious. It yeah. really does. It makes me anxious that also that it's given people who um had always wanted. I don't want to be Casper the haters, but um, it's given doubters people that doubted you. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the 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 thing to say yeah but this is her one downfall and I have to you know kind of realign myself and say you know in the bigger scheme of things yeah. there's a typo mm -hmm. and there's a work that got out yeah yeah and you know the thing is the thing that did, wasn't even comforting during that moment was when people were saying oh yeah I'm sure the book has mistakes but have you seen her other work like nothing was comforting yeah in that moment really nothing was um but I, it, it's not easy. Yeah. I, I almost fell apart because remember Bontu Gwadu was like the first kind of uh, highly publicized book yeah. after that. Yeah. And when, when that happened, I was like, honestly, someone is trying to ruin yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I actually even sent an email, I remember, to one of the editors and I said, is this happening only with Blackbird books? Mm. Is someone trying to fucking sabotage me? Yeah. You know, um, but I don't think, and I think the more anxious you are about something, the yeah. more you're attracted as yeah. well. Uh, but there will be mistakes. Yeah. There will I be mistakes. For me, um, I'm not proud of it. But I also don't sit there checking. I'm not a proofreader. Yeah. So I have to put my trust in people. Yeah. It's something I have no control over. It's just. And mistakes like will happen because at the end of the day, it's still people who are dealing with a whole book. So yeah. sometimes it can happen. So I think there's something very inspiring about um, watching people you look up to. And not to say you wish those moments on them. But when you watch them in a moment where things could fall apart, or things do fall apart, and then they recover. And I think there's comfort in, because erring is human, and there's so much comfort in knowing that there will be a community of people to support you, even after that thing has happened, and you will grow, and it doesn't mean anything. 
Because I mean, now no one's still going. Oh, they are. They are actually. The big falls. I think the last Blackbird books book I read was Eye Bags and Dimples, which is not a Blackbird book. It's not a Blackbird book. It's not Yet. a Blackbird book. Yet. But um, so Bonnie and Willie or Bonnie Henna as written on the cover. That's her book. And um, she writes exactly about that thing of falling apart and falling apart publicly and then coming back from it. So yeah, I think the public thing is hard, eh? Mm. For because, so I remember when, the, like, in the heat of that moment, um, we had a family gathering. Mm. So it started happening on the night on the second of August, and then we had a family gathering on the fifth of August. And my dad and everyone they were up here. We were in Soweto, and then I got a call. And first of all, I cry, I was crying that morning, and then I put myself together because I was gonna be with family. And then obviously some people are like, so what's happening? And I guess. And then I get a call that Exclusive Books was removing the book. And then so I stood outside and I'm crying. And and I was trying to hide from my dad. And then I was crying, my sister was standing with me. And then my dad, whom I'd, I'd asked my stepmom not to tell him what was happening. And my dad comes outside and then he sees me crying and immediately adopts like, okay, who am I beating up kind of attitude. And then when my sister told him what was happening, the, the helpless look on his face broke me mm. because I was going through something that even he couldn't help yeah. me through. Um, and I think that that very moment was what made me so desperate in that situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, you kind of, you, you move on, you know. So, where do you see Blackbird in the next five years? Uh, hopefully this damn thing will run itself so I can live my best life. <laughs> um, I want to write. You want to write? I want to write. That's what I want to do. I want to write. Um, I think, so if, if I trace my journey from being intern, junior, publisher, publisher, and then Blackbird, mm. right? Every, every, every phase of that was was informed by being tired of the previous phase yeah so i think i'm i'm approaching a point where i'm going to be tired yeah of this you know like obviously never let go of blackbird as a thing but i hope it's big enough to accommodate people to run it what i'm doing at the moment is actually near impossible mm. i have to be a publisher and then run a business at the same time yeah. it is not it is not always feasible I, i'm not always um same yeah because of it so i must either be able to do and either hire someone to run the business or run someone to do the publishing mm. but something has got to give so i hope so that the next thing is to grow blackbird and to have black publishers i can't stress enough how i'm dying to have a group of publishers uh, publishing for this imprint because I want I want to have it not run on just my voice and my internal desires yeah. all the time That's you know um yeah so because I'm never going to be able to cover um all the stories that need to be told by myself so that is what I want to see in the next five years um it running you know kind of consistently as a business but also having the work that it does um you know not compromised by that so I'm about to be a published author. I got the deal. I'm signed on to Blackbird Books. And I'm excited. But then what's the thing that I must know? Like, what advice do you have for writers? Because I know we gave you hell as far as time was concerned. Um, Sitley and I, because we weren't meeting the deadlines and stuff like that. So what's the advice you have for authors who are just on the brink of publishing? One of the things I always say to authors is, I always ask them, do you like me? Yeah. Because so, I like you. <laughs> you know, cause I'll, I'll, and I like to get that balance before yeah. we go into a book. Because the publishing process is so strenuous yeah. that at the end of it, it's either we still love each other or, or one of us hates or, you know. Yeah. But you, you'd have to push me for me not to like you. Yeah. Like, you'd actually have to really push me. Um, but what you need to know is that publishing is not... Publishing in South Africa is not what you see in the movies. Yeah. Or in Hollywood, it's yeah. not. That's not it. 
so we don't have budgets for like fancy launches mm. we do what we can so don't come in here expecting a superstar kind of treatment you know like there is no way for yeah. us to make that happen for you and i find a lot of discontent with authors is that you know they're coming in they're expecting fame they're expecting oftentimes we can't control how the media receives you mm. even sometimes the media just doesn't give a shit that you've released a book okay so what mm. you know so and that's why it's very important for you to be writing as a writer to honor yourself yeah not to blow up yeah um you know and p pr and marketing in in the book business is something very iffy because one budgets are very tiny and it's weird because that's we need the marketing and the pr for books to blow up so we can do this but you know sometimes you can spend as much time in, and money blowing up a book but still not have the sales yeah. because that's just the country we live in right um your royalty check when it does come is not gonna take you on a holiday to the facials uh unless yeah, is no it gonna take you to thailand at least it's to spur <laughs> <laughs> Stand, please. um spur uh -huh. um spur spur um because it's just the kind of country we live in yeah. right unless you're writing um what is this book that's being burned? Oh, that, um, yeah, the that one. Gangster. Something. Yes, unless yeah. you're writing that kind of book in South Africa right now, it's not gonna pop. So that what? royalty check. Mm -hmm. But, but, and this is important, write the kind of book that will stand the test of time. That for me, like if we were to wake up now in a near perfect state and you couldn't publish a book on against the state or you know um Gandla or what is the literature that we're going to be reading then yeah so write those books mm. you know in 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 yeah write those books mm. and just remember that you're honoring yourself and you answering to your higher purpose in life but yeah there is no money to make you a superstar um we can only do so much mm. um so i know it's a business but um a Bantu Book Festival does this very interesting thing where um, they call for donations, donate to a Bantu guys, 50 bucks a month for 600 Please do, please donate off. to, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll put the donate. link below. <laughs> um, so have you considered something like that? Actually, I did. I did consider it about two years ago, I did. And then I thought, oh, no one's going to care. Yeah. Right? Um, and then I saw in, in the UK, Jacaranda Books did it. And they, they raised enough money mm. to publish 20 oh, books damn. by black people. And I was like, you know, but then I, I wonder if it's something that would work here, right? Mm. And it's something we need because you know what the stats are yeah. for black published people in this country. Yeah. So I've got numbers to about 2016, but at the end of 2016, um, it was about 6% black women and 7%, um, no, 9% black men of 100 over 100 that's the books that we've put out but what's the state doing for publishers and like no i mean they're congratulating us in parliament sending condolences and congratulating yeah they they did they yeah yeah because it's so bizarre that like there's very little involvement and i remember at our launch at, at sabc we had like a few states people and you were like um, you managed to put in a swipe about how <laughs> about how books still get taxed, or it was Sisha who said that. But then you were talking about yeah. the fact that you don't get funding. But it was just there's so much that it's so bizarre for me because for a country to grow and not to say the only way to know and to grow is by reading, but reading is an essential part of that. So I don't understand why the state would not be participating. I mean, look, pe people can't read like co comprehensive women in this country still yeah. and i saw this moment at mcdonald's where i'm like how are we even pushing for fourth industrial revolution mm. when people cannot can't read? read you know like people can't they can't like there was a queue at mcdonald's because people are trying to figure out that mm. and with something like that it's literally read the instructions to move yeah. on yeah right but yeah. people are unable to do that but we're pushing for fourth industrial revolution. Mm. You can't do it without literature. You can't do it without reading. Okay. You heard? 
Minister of Communication. Yes, Minister of Communication. We're talking to you. You heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did I want to say? Children's books. So um, um, here's the thing. Ordinarily, not a children's books uh, publisher. Yeah. But if now that we in a phase of how do we grow? How do we? How do we? How do we? There's a book that I'm considering. And maybe I can get you to write it for me. Because it's weird. I'm going to tell you when we finish here. Because it's a weird thing for me to want to do it. Because you'll see why. But it's it's one that is going to be very special to me. Uh, and I hope to everyone. But yeah. It, yeah. So we're going into that. We're going into poetry a little. So it's, it's deviating from our usual. But bit by bit. And also by kind of testing the waters. Yeah. Because ultimately it's what the market responds to. Mm -hmm. That we will publish. So I'm hoping you guys will love um, our children's book when it comes out and our poetry. You can't not love the poetry because it's my best. Okay. Do you have anything that you feel I should have asked that you want to share? No, just um, like please buy books. Buy books. Buy local books. Buy black authors. Buy black book books. You're better. Okay. You're done. I want to thank you for because um, you changed lives, man. And it's not something we realize, but I'd never dreamt that I would be published. Like it's not even something that I dared to think about. It just happened to me, and you kind of go oh all this work into something I didn't want. But the interesting thing is how your life changes post the publishing, because now you can dare to dream even bigger. I think that's the best gift. It's not even like the book being out. It's the fact that when the book is out, you can dream. You get to dream. Mm -hmm. And um, I know one of your new authors, it always stays with me, Uremi, said there's no pity publishing. So to be chosen. Um, Remy Nganji's book, The Eternal Audience of One, is out in your bookstores in June. Oh, I thought you said it's out. I was like, no, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Um, but yeah, it says there's no pretty publishing. So to be seen by someone who has been brave enough to do this thing and brilliant enough as someone worthy of being taken on that journey, it's something that is just life-changing. It's And it's something that would not be possible without you. Oh, to, you. And all the things that happen after, man, it's wild. Anyway, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I thought it would be good for us to get to know this lady. Never doing this again, just by the by. The rest of the book chats will be normal things where I speak to actual writers and book people. Actual writers? No, like about their work. Oh. Like we would do this, we'd invert yeah, this. Way, yeah. And then you would talk about your book instead yeah. of this because this has gotten very uncomfortable. It's one of the things I didn't bargain for mm. when I went to do this publishing. Like the amount of Talking about my side, I have to do, it's weird. It's still weird. It still weirds me out. Which is not what you came here for. Yeah. But send me free things if you want. I don't mind that. <laughs> anyway. Thank you thank for you, sharing Lucy. you with us. Thank you. Love you. Love you. And thank you to our beautiful camera lady. Yes. Yeah. It's a lady. It's a lady. It's a lady. It's a, lady. It's a, lady. It's a black lady. We're going to put a picture up. No, you're not doing that. <laughs>